Oh. Because I know I don't want to jump into a car with a fucking mouth. Listen to me. I just leave fucking... I leave uh, Aspen. I owe like $80,000. I got eight people looking for me. The cops are looking for me. I go from Aspen to Boulder. I need a job. So I take a job making Joe. I'm not kidding you. One sixty a week, 60 hours. Wow. As a fucking shag. Which I'm the guy that takes a car from you in the body shop. When you pull up, I'm the mm -hmm. guy that takes it and I wash it and then they start the body work. And then after they've done the body work, I'm the guy that washes it. And if you do that for three or four months, then they turn you into a detailer. And I passed the test and I became a detailer. You're making $160 a week? Oh, it was fucking garbage. I was starving. <laughs> I was starving. But I was good. And I became a detailer. But the detailing was commission. And you made a hundred to a buck fifty a day. And you know, I was enjoying it. But the guy I had as a boss was a dick. <laughs> His name was Dirk Jordan. He was just a dick, dog. He was one of those guys that was one of us, but one day he got the manager's job. Uh... And one night I'm back there washing a fucking car. And I see a dead rat. And I pick the fucking rat up. And he had his jacket hanging by the door. I put the dead rat in his pocket, right, of his jacket, right? Ooh. You know me, dog. I go home, I get stoned. I don't know nothing. The next morning, he comes in, bro, and his cat car is fucked up. Like, he hit, like, a pole. <laughs> <laughs> he reached in and felt the rat. He went in his pocket to get a cigarette. Oh. And he pulled the fucking rat out, and he fucking just went crazy and hit like a pole. Oh he came God. in running. I know who did this. <laughs> I'm going to get to the bottom of this. And he kept blaming some other guy. I'm sitting all the time fucking giggling my fucking ass off. <laughs> oh, I bosses. Fuck, man. That's one of the worst relationships ever, a boss and employee. One of the worst relationships. Some guy gets to tell you what to do. He's the fucking, he's the head guy at the office. You gotta listen to this fuckhead. That is one of the worst positions to be in. Working for a guy who's a dick. And that power that someone would have, you know, if you were, you moved on up, you became the office manager, you can control people's future, control where they get a raise, how much time they get off, you can make the decisions, whether or not you allow them to do certain things. It's what a fucking the, what, terrible What was the worst boss you ever had? Let's come on and be clean. But all of them was the were first in construction. Guy, what was the first guy you looked at and said, you know what? If I ever see you outside of here, I'm going to fuck you up. I never said that. But uh, guys in construction, they would get real dicky. I did one time. There was a guy when I was a teenager that was talking a bunch of shit. He would hit me with a hammer. Yeah. There was a, because he got, he got aggressive with me. And it, was, it wasn't in a way where um, I deserved it. He was just bullying me. And I was like 16, 17. But I had already had a fuckload of fights by then. Like, you know, Taekwondo fights. I was like, dude, I'll, I'll kick you in your fucking head. Like, you talk a bunch of crazy shit to me like this. Like, he was talking to me in uh, not just a way like a boss employee. He was talking to me in a, in a way where I was going to have to quit. But I never, never, never said I was going to do anything to him. I didn't, like, threaten him and say, I'll see you after this and I'll fuck you up. I said, don't talk to me like that because I could fuck you up. That's basically what I said to him. But there was, that's the thing about construction is, like, there was a lot of, like, man-to-man -man type conflict. Like, it wasn't unheard of to hear about street fights between guys who were working together. They got pissed and pushed each other and punched each other in the fucking snow. You know, dudes carrying uh, roofing tiles. One guy knocks another guy over or something. They start fighting. That shit happened all the time. Because a lot of the people that were doing labor, too, were like real dirtbags. Like, there was this one guy that I did labor with. Um, I worked with my friend Leroy Rodriguez and his buddy. They had uh, some business partner. They would uh, take apart old houses and redo them. And Leroy was uh, one of the black belts at the, the Taekwondo Institute. He was a bad motherfucker. And uh, Leroy got me this gig. And uh, I worked with these guys laboring, and one of the guys we worked with lived in this fucked up abandoned building. Well, not abandoned, but stripped out building. I mean, there was parts of the building where there's no floor. It was all fucked up. Half the walls were missing. They were redoing the whole building and taking things out and fixing things. This guy lived there, and he had a Mountain Dew jug filled with malt liquor, and he would drink it warm all day. 
and he had the shakes. Everything he did, the dude had the shakes. He was just drunk all day on a crazy job site where, like, you know, there's no floors sometimes. <laughs> like, everything's all fucked up. You have to balance when you're going from one room to the other because they're tearing down parts of the wall. And this guy, somehow or another, fucking slid on through drinking the entire time. And I remember thinking... Like, these are people that have made questionable decisions. It makes you want to go back to college. It makes you want to get a degree. When you're around a lot of these guys, like laborers and stuff, like, you know, some of them are just like me. They're just young guys who need a gig and they need money. And some of them are dudes who have been doing it their whole life, and they're 50, and they're drunk. Oh, and, my God. Yeah, and their you bodies falling apart. You see that, you apart. feel terrible about yourself. You're like, yeah. I don't know if I want to do this. If I, I definitely knew I didn't want to do it. I definitely knew I didn't want to do it. That, that, well, you know, to be a carpenter is a different gig. You know, like a, a real good carpenter, that's a skilled craftsman and an artist. You know, you're putting together things. That's different. But the, the laborer gig was not like you didn't really have to know anything. You just had to be big enough to listen to them, you know, big enough to like pick things up. Can you go get that? Go get me that bag of cement. Go dig. dig all right, you guys are going to take nails out of these boards now. And it was like that kind of shit. You just hung out with the weirdest people, man. The worst guy I remember, Joe Rogan, I was clean from coke. I was clean about 90 days. I was really trying to turn my life around. And I answered an ad for a construction uh, carpenter's helper. And he hired me. I went, and, I, and the first day he had to work for free. He worked he, for free? Yeah, he abused me. So they could me. see you. Yeah, so I said, okay, I agreed to it. I measured Wow, cut. first day work for free. I cut the stuff, and you have to go get lunch and the whole thing. Yeah, okay, I did it. I passed, and then... The guy would say, okay, meet me at a diner at 8. And when I'd go get paid, he'd say, what's those hours? And I'd go, you told me to meet you at 8. He goes, oh, no, didn't you ever hear windshield time? So let's say the job, we didn't get to the job by 10. That's when you start getting paid? That's when I started getting paid. And I was, you know, I was at, I was really trying. I, I lived with a friend. I wanted to give them rent money. I was trying to put away some money. I forget what he paid me. He didn't pay. He made me pay for my own lunch. Then one day he said, uh, where's your weight belt? Your, you know, work belt. And I go, I don't have one. He goes, okay, I'll pay. And you have to pay me the for the materials plus 30%. And I was plus like, you're 30 percent. Yeah, you're a fucking scumbag. Just to have like a claw. A fucking hammer and uh, something else. Yeah. I forget what so it to was. To do work for him. To work you had to for have him. your own tools. On a yeah. saw and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, that was always a thing, um, whether or not <coughs> you were union or non-union. You know, there was a lot of the, the work that I did when I was a kid was non-union. And a lot of the people didn't want a union. They felt like the union guys, they had it easier, but it was it was too expensive. And people didn't want to, you, you know, use certain people. So it was, it was like a real debate, like what's better? Is well, every, it, for every amount of union people, you have to have a certain amount of non-union. Is that how it works? To balance it out, right? So everybody makes money. But it seems like in some things, like auto workers, they don't fuck around, right? No. Like no, everybody no, has every, to be union. Strict different unions. Kid. But you like construction is different. mandatory breaks, glory time. Yeah. You know, there's not lists. If a job opens up, how do we get it? You got to go on a list. Mm -hmm. Rogan has more minority than Diaz. He started nine months before Diaz. He gets the job. Yeah. You know, it's not about knowing all that shit. Well, that dude, I'll never forget that dude's name and, and what he did and the scumbag he was to me. But on Fridays, he would make me feel bad. Like he goes, so how many hours did you work? And I'd go 38. And he'd go, no, I'm paying you for 30. And he'd bully me, this guy. But every Friday, he'd go, this Friday, I'm going away. I'm going here to fuck my wife in the ass. And he was always an asshole. And then all of a sudden, I got my my check i got this check i was waiting for and one saturday i'm sitting there i'm like i'm sick of this motherfucker i'm gonna rob his house <laughs> and i jumped the fence and i kicked the back door open <sighs> and he was a guy that bought hot shit on the side he, I mean, the shit. guy was just a, bus, a sack of shit and he must have had i don't know how many fucking bottles and cases of dom perignon so I fucking ran up to the corner, called my buddy, go meet me at this address. And I took every bottle of Dom Perignon that he had, and I sold him at liquor stores. I took his checkbook. I mean, I buried this fucking guy just for how bad he treated me. He was such a fucking scumbag. Oh. Never bought lunch. 
he was always making cra- you know he was always making little fucking remarks well that's what we were talking about earlier what yeah. happens when a guy gets into power that's a piece of shit oh my god so he worse. was such a fucking you become sack a victim to him yeah i remember i had his t-shirt for a long time i used to wear it and smile every time <laughs> jhs or some shit like that fuck him <laughs> 